Good evening, Plan Commission. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, we have all of the members here that said that they were able to make it tonight. Um, Dustin Allred is not able to make it, so you will need to select yourself a chair uh, that would not include anybody who might be abstaining from the meeting tonight. I nominate Lou. We have a nomination for Mr. Hopkins. Does Second. Mr. Hopkins accept the nomination? <laughs> Reluctantly, I'm hoping you have all the written stuff, all the sheet sheets from us. All of the what? Sheet sheets. Yes. So, uh, do you have a, a do you need a packet? I need everything. Okay. offer friendly coaching as necessary. Thank you. Um, what I might suggest also though is uh, we have, I think some members who haven't been here in person before, am I? Okay, so maybe after we open introductions. Oh, okay. So I call the meeting to order at 7.05. Um, and this isn't Roll. actually the full agenda sheet. Um, so while we're getting organized, we can do introductions. And maybe we can just start over here with new person. Hey, <laughs> Andrew Fell. Lou Hopkins. Tracy Ewing. Deborah McFarland. Sorry. Deborah McFarland. Okay, so uh, we need to do a roll call. We don't need to do a roll call because we are in person now. Um, at least that oh. is. A roll call is no longer needed. For, oh, sorry, for the minutes. Yes, we do need to do a roll call. Yeah. Um, and I was reminded to ask everybody to please turn on their mics and speak up clearly. Uh, the masks make it really hard to take notes from the audio, so we need to speak loud. Um, Dustin Allred is excused. Will Andreessen. This is, just say yes, here. 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 Uh, Andrew Fell. Here. Lou Hopkins. Here. Deborah McFarland. Here. Karen Sims. Here. Chen Shi Yu. Here. Thank you. Okay, and we have a quorum. Yes. Okay, any changes to the agenda? There are no changes to the agenda. Okay, approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I will move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Okay, second. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, any communications? Uh, there were no communications submitted. Okay, and we have no continued public hearings, no old business, so new public hearings. Plan case 2454 PUD 22. As the applicant, I will recuse myself. Thank you. PUD 22 is an, a request by Andrew Fell. Thank you. 
On behalf of Alex Bragg, doing business as Ross and Anti Holdings LLC to amend the Northgate Plaza planned unit development to allow for the construction of an indoor climbing facility at 1502.5 Cunningham Avenue in the B3 General Business Zoning District. The proposed amendment would modify several sections of the planned unit developments governing documents that are recorded, including the permitted location of structures, the height limit of structures, the permitted uses in the PUD, and the parking lot design and minimum number of parking spaces required. Some of these modifications require only consensus of property owners and tenants, while other modifications also require approval by city council. Granting the planned unit development amendment would allow the applicant and future property owners more flexibility to develop their property. The plan commission must review the PUD amendment, hold a public hearing and make a recommendation to the city council regarding those modifications that require city council approval. The city council must then approve, approve with certain conditions or deny the request for those modifications that require city council approval not for those modifications that only require property owner and tenant owner consent. Staff recommends that the plan commission forward the case to city council with a recommendation of approval as presented with the proposed modified declaration language, modified development plan and conditions included in the staff report. Staff have made changes to the modified development plan since it was distributed to the commission, which I will review with you during the presentation. Alex Bragg, property owner, and Will Thomas of Andrew Fell Design are here to speak on behalf of the application. So, a little background. Um, in 1981, Busey First National Bank applied for preliminary and final planned unit development approval for Northgate Plaza, which they called an integrated shopping development. Uh, exhibit E includes the original declaration and development plan. In 1991, Marine Bank of Champaign-Urbana Trust 43344 applied for a special use permit to amend the PUD to allow the sale of a portion of Tract C, which is one of the three parcels that are in the shopping center. Later in 91, Marine Bank fulfilled this special use permit by applying for a minor development to replat track C of the three tracked PUD into its own two separate lots. The western lot is the lot that is owned by the applicant tonight. Note four on this 1991 plat stated all covenants and conditions governing the original Northgate Plaza special use per ordinance numbers 8081-120, which was the original 1981 PUD, and ordinance number 9091-149, which was the special use permit amended PUD, shall apply to this plat, meaning even if that parcel was subdivided out of the plat, it is still subject to all the conditions of the original 1981 plat. Uh, applicant owns lot two of this plat and is thus bound by those covenants and conditions. So Northgate Plaza is located at the southeast corner of Cunningham Avenue and Perkins Road, which was exhibit A. Um, this site plan provided gives a little more information about the property. The main building lies parallel to Cunningham Avenue and includes both parcel A which is the upper parcel, which is a little, sorry, the middle parcel, which is a little confusing. Um, and the tenants in there are La Michoacana, Harbor Freight, and Dollar General. Um, the main building also contains uh, the lower uh, tract C with those tenants that are VIP Banquet Hall, Lucky Luke's Gaming, R&R's Laundromat, Urban Beauty and Fashions, and Metro by T-Mobile. Track B, which is the parcel to the far north, um, includes CIBM Bank as a separate building. 
Lot one of Tract C over here in the southwest corner includes the applicant's building, Urbana Boulders. Uh, table one in the staff report summarized the current zoning, existing land uses, and comprehensive plan future land use designations. Uh, very briefly, the, the parcel in question, the PUD, is all zone B3 general business, as well as land to the north on the other side of Perkins and to the west side of Cunningham and down Cunningham. Uh, land to the east in the county is zoned R3 in the county. Um, and land to the south is also zoned city R4 and R5, which is medium and high family, multiple family residential. The uh, 2005 comprehensive plan designates this area and this corridor along Cunningham Avenue as community business with multifamily to the south and east. So some more helpful pictures. Um, the, these four parcels, 1514 North Cunningham, 1508 North Cunningham, uh, two parcels that are addressed, 1508 North Cunningham and 1502 North Cunningham are the uh, four parcels that are still bound by the plan unit development conditions. Um, Urbana Boulders is here at 1502 North Cunningham. Uh, some photos, uh, the upper photo is a street view coming along Cunningham showing the entire planned unit development, which is the subject of the case tonight. And the lower picture uh, is a little bit zoomed in on Urbana Boulders, but you can still see the main building to the rear. Um, the existing use that is related and prompting the PUD amendment tonight um, is a bouldering gym, which is a single story building approximately 18 feet tall and encompassing 5,700 square feet. This existing use is permitted by right in the B3 district as a private indoor recreational development. Uh, although the original PUD site plan shows 15 spaces to the west and more than 10 parking spaces to the south, those areas are not used for parking. Asphalt has deteriorated, uh, borders are overgrown and striping has worn away. Uh, we'll see some more closer pictures of that but you can see that going on over here. This is the west side of Urbana Boulders. You can see the grass growing up through the asphalt. Uh, if the PUD amendment is approved, the applicant proposes to build a single story, 60 foot high, 6,200 square foot climbing facility on the west side of the existing building, extending to within approximately 10 feet of the west property line. Uh, the applicant also proposes to extend the south end of the existing building to within 20 feet of the south property line, expanding it roughly 1,500 square feet to uh, build a yoga studio, locker rooms, and an outdoor seating area. Overall, the building would increase uh, 7,700 square feet. Uh, this expansion would increase the overall uh, shopping center size by 11%. These proposed expansions of this activity would be permitted by right in the B3 district as it stands right now. They are not the subject of the case tonight, but are simply one example of potential development that would be permitted by zoning if the PUD, PUD amendment were approved. Uh, moving into the substantiveness of the declaration. Uh, according to the zoning ordinance, the zoning administrator may approve minor changes to an adopted PUD plan. Uh, because of the language in the plan unit development covenants that say certain sections of it require city council approval, that trumps what the zoning ordinance allows. Um, some changes, proposed changes are minor and some are major. Uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So that's why we're here tonight for the PUD amendment some sections require city council approval and some do not. Um, some, uh, let's see, the staff report goes through and explains the layout of the original declaration for expediency. I will review only those sections that are proposed to be amended. 
Uh, section one governs common area development. This section establishes the common areas as opposed to the building areas and requires that all buildings have a parking area that is available for common use, shared use by all of the merchants and all of the employees and all of the um, visitors to the, the shopping center. The original approved final development plan laid out three building areas of delineated sizes and proposed land uses. And this is that plan. Uh, zooming in, you can see uh, here is one building area, the southwest building area. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in any further. Uh, this main building area is another designated building area. And this building area up here is the third designated building area. You had to build within those. And if you expanded them, then you would need to amend the PUD to allow you to build outside those. The shopping center area included 62,000 feet of building area. Uh, which translated into a floor area ratio of 0.17. So basically 17% coverage of the entire lot by building, which is much less than the maximum 5.0 floor area ratio that's allowed, which is like a five story building covering the entire lot. So there's a lot less lot coverage than is permitted by right. Um, the applicant's building is located in the southwest building area, which was originally 6,600 square feet in size. Modifications to this section require property owner and parcel A tenant approval and city council approval. This is one section that you would have to decide on. Skipping sections two and three, we're not proposing any changes. Section four governs party wall and building restrictions. Um, it restricts buildings to one story in height, and those buildings shall be constructed so as to complement other buildings located in the shopping center to give the appearance of a uniform integrated sales and shopping facility, as this was seen in 1981 or in the future. Uh, modifications to this section require only property owner and parcel A tenant consensus, according to the PUD's language. Um, restrictions on use, section five. This section specifies some prohibited uses and some additional requirements for parking. Modifications to this section require only property owner and parcel A tenant consensus. So moving into the actual proposed modifications to the declaration, uh, staff and the applicant are proposing no changes to the preliminary section. Uh, section one would be proposed to be amendment. Uh, paragraph two requires that buildings shall not be established or maintained without providing a common parking facility. Uh, the parking is shared amongst the tenants. Uh, 430 spaces were built originally, including 42 bicycle parking spaces that were at least uh, shown in the site plan. Only 339 parking spaces were required using the original proposed uses for calculating those minimum parking requirements, meaning that there was 91 extra parking spaces at the time. The proposed expansion would eliminate approximately 26 parking spaces, leaving 404 parking spaces, which would still be 41 spaces more than are required. And that proposed expansion is shown here. Uh, this would be included as a change to the development plan to show um, that these 26 parking spaces would be deleted. Um, so staff recommends that the final development plan be revised to remove the 26 parking spaces west and south of the southwest retail building area and to include a statement on the development plan that says parking would be regulated by the Urbana Zoning Ordinance. This is a change in the language in the staff report which had originally recommended 
we want you to provide at least 370 parking spaces. Um, we discussed that internally and thought that it made more sense to allow the zoning ordinance at whatever time it is referred to, to dictate and regulate the parking that would be required at that time. 370 parking spaces might be not be enough 40 years from now if there's a highly intense use, or it might be too much if we decide to change our parking requirements. So putting in a static number didn't seem to make sense yesterday when we discussed it. Um, so uh, zooming out a little bit, that statement would basically say here in red, um, vehicle and bicycle parking must be provided in compliance with the Urbana zoning ordinance and that would replace the current key on the development plan where it states how many parking spaces are required. Okay. Um, we wouldn't make any changes to section two, which is easements. Section three is about operation and maintenance of common areas. Uh, the first sentence states, no building structure or barriers of any kind shall be erected on any portions of parcels A, B, and C, except upon those portions designated building area, etc." cetera. Uh, the proposed expansions westward and southward would be outside the existing 6,600 square foot building area envelope. So staff recommend that the Southwest retail building area shown on exhibit B be expanded to roughly West, 10 feet from the west property line and 20 feet from the south property line or to a lesser extent to comply with any other requirements necessary to meet plan review and approval. So this is strictly recommendation from a zoning aspect. If stormwater management or safety or building code requires an, a larger setback, then we would shift that. This modification requires property owner and parcel A tenant consensus and city council approval. This is one of those sections that the declaration specified would require city council approval. Um, and so the recommendation shows here this statement. Um, there was language in there that said FAR requirements and open space requirements. This is simply saying look at the proposed development from the standpoint of the underlying zoning district. So if the zoning district got changed to B4 or something else, it would refer back to that zoning district requirement for the development regulations. We're trying to future proof essentially. Um, we wouldn't, let's see, uh, Section four, party wall and building restrictions. Paragraph three of this section is the one that restricted buildings to one story in height and their style. Although the proposed climbing facility is technically only one story, there's a floor and a ceiling. You climb up 60 feet. Um, it is 60 feet high, which is more than twice as tall as any other building there on the property. Um, however, this would be within the maximum height allowed by the B3 zoning district in the zoning ordinance. So if we really mean that, yes, you can build something to the B3 district, we should stay, give a height maximum that, and not even give the height maximum, just say, build it according to the zoning ordinance. Um, if we feel that that's okay, if you feel that that's okay. Uh, the language re requiring conformance to an appearance of a uniform integrated sales and shopping facility is outdated and subjective given the age and condition of the shopping center. In addition, the Urbana zoning ordinance doesn't set a maximum structure height in the underlying B3 zoning district. So staff re recommend that paragraph three be deleted from the declaration and that modifications be regulated by the Urbana Zoning Ordinance and other relevant codes and regulations, fire code, building code, anything else. Um, this modification requires only property owner and parcel A tenant consensus. So the property owners and parcel A tenants, which is the north half of the shopping center building, they still have to agree to all this. 
So you don't have to worry about not taking care of the underlying property owners and tenants because they have to agree to change the declaration. Uh, okay, section five, which is restrictions on use. This section prohibits any part of the shopping center other than parcel A, which is that middle portion, upper middle portion, to be used as a general market, grocery store, bowling alley, bar or tavern, skating rink, theater, or other recreational facility or training or educational facility. Uh, this originally served to protect the interests of the original grocery store tenant of parcel A. However, that tenant has long since vacated the shopping center and now the prohibition simply excludes a market or grocery store in the rest of the shopping center. Furthermore, both Urbana Boulders and Lucky Luke's currently occupy parts of parcel C in unknowing violation of this recreational facility prohibition. It's not really city staff's purview to um, enforce covenants. We don't necessarily have all of them on file and we don't review them. So um, staff recommend that section five restrictions on use be deleted from the declaration and that uses be regulated by the Urbana zoning ordinance and other relevant regulations. Again, this modification requires only property owner and parcel A tenant consensus, but it does require their consensus for it to be changed. Uh, there are no proposed changes to section six general provisions. Uh, so although the proposed business expansion is not the subject of the case tonight, I did wanna share with you some information that might help illustrate the types of potential development that could occur if the PUD amendment was granted. So don't get stuck on it, but it is something that might be there. And uh, the property owner and the designer are here to answer questions about those things. Um, so here is what Urbana Boulders looks like now, looking at it from the north side and the south side. Um, here, the upper is the west side of Urbana Boulders. This was originally laid out as uh, I believe uh, 15 parking spaces. They haven't been used like that in decades. Uh, it has not been maintained like that. Uh, the stripes are no longer legible. It's gotten overgrown. The south, the lower picture is the south side of the building. That's the south property line on the right hand side. Again, originally this was laid out to be striped for parking spaces. It's not used as that. So clearly parking is not in short supply in this shopping center. Uh, this is the proposed expansion. These are my little colored boxes. Um, this is the current building. Um, it's proposed to expand westward for the climbing facility and southward uh, for a yoga studio. There'd be some renovations done in the main building on the south end and this little uh, outdoor deck on the south side. Um, this is a proposed site plan. Again, just showing you footprint expansion. Um, this is the, sorry, uh, the existing building here in the upper right. The climbing wall is on the west side. It's one giant room and uh, the yoga studio and the outdoor deck are on the south side. You can still see uh, there's at least 10 to 15 feet along the west side of the building and the property line and uh, roughly 20 feet at least between the south property line and the expansion of the building. Um, these are some options that the, the applicant is exploring. It's actually four different designs. Uh, just picking one of them, this could be one of many options of by right expansions again. Um, private indoor recreational development is a by right use at this site. Uh, this is Beaumont Animal Hospital on the right hand side of the building. This is an existing tree line that's between Beaumont's and Urbana Boulders. And the climbing facility is basically taking up the space that was that unused parking lot. 
Uh, these are a couple different shots. This is looking at um, the one option from the north side. And this is looking, the lower right picture is looking along the south end of the building, showing the outdoor deck um, and uh, the clear space. Uh, and then also you can see the indoor climbing facility in the back. Um, okay. Uh, staff reviewed the proposed changes to the PUD against the criteria listed in section 13.3 of the Urbana Zoning Ordinance. Um, and staff analysis showed first that the proposed moder modifications would not alter the overall use or significantly alter the character of the shopping center as originally approved by the city council. Again, city council back in 81 didn't approve any designs of the facility. They simply said, here are allowable footprints. It can be one story tall and here are some uses and here's all the parking. Second, the proposed modifications would increase the lot coverage by only 11% well below the maximum FAR that's allowed by the underlying B3 zoning district, which is now only 4.0, but it's still a lot. It's only 0.11, sorry, 0.17 out of 4.0. It would allow a 60 foot high climbing facility that is similar in height to the trees that buffer it from the adjacent animal hospital. This building height complies with the underlying B3 zoning regulations and would not increase the intensity of the use of the shopping center. Again, not focusing on this one particular use, but because that is what prompted the amendment, we are talking about it. Uh, third, the proposed modifications would not affect open space setbacks, loading spaces, or required street widths. It would eliminate 26 overgrown and unused parking spaces, leaving a surplus of at least 40 parking spaces. Um, as the proposed modifications are eliminating only parking spaces that are not currently usable, they would not affect pedestrian, bicycle, or vehicular traffic circulation. Um, and finally, no additional waivers would be required. Staff did receive a copy of a letter from CIBM consenting to the proposed development. Uh, we have received no other public input regarding the project. So I guess I will amend my communications statement at the beginning of the meeting. Um, this uh, letter would be included as part of the plan review process to ensure that they're meeting all of their consent requirements for this. Uh, we have not heard back yet, or the applicant has not heard back yet from the other tenants and owners. However, staff would ensure that all of those consents were received before any building permits would be issued. Um, Question, so, when you said there was a letter, but from whom? Um, CIBM Bank, which is the um, property owner to the north on parcel oh, okay. B. And so they're one of the required sign-offs on this. And, and that letter said what? Uh, that they don't have any objection to the proposed modifications. They have not seen um, the modified language yet, but they were approached by the applicant saying, here's what we want to do. Is this building modification okay with you? Um, so this is what the sign off sheet would look like that would be attached to the, the modified plat. It has spaces for the owners of parcels A, B, and C to sign off, as well as spaces for tenants of all tracks to sign off on it. Not all of the tenants are required, just those on tract A, but I understand that the applicant wanted to try and at least share the information with everybody. And having universal consensus would be nicer. Okay. So then moving into the modified development plan, we looked at this a little bit. Uh, this is the big sheet version. The three changes to it on page one you've already seen um, are uh, the two statements up here that talk about um, vehicle parking would have to conform to the Urbana Zoning Ordinance. And this statement here is uh, it would have to meet the development regulations of the underlying zoning without specifying B3 because that's possible to change. 
and then the third change is expanding that southwest building area which would then also eliminate um, those 26 parking spaces there is a, a second page to the development plan that shows um, less infrastructure on it uh, this would also show an expanded building area uh, the findings are summarized in the staff report I will only mention a couple of the highlights the proposed expansion would eliminate 26 parking spaces and would extend outside the delineated building area if consented to by property owners and parcel a tenants the final development plan should be revised to expand the building area to within 10 feet of the west property line and 20 feet of the south property line um, the proposed climbing area would be 60 feet high if consented to by property owners and parcel a tenants the declaration should be revised to delete section 4 paragraph 3 to allow modifications to be regulated by the urbana zoning ordinance uh, the proposed climbing facility would be a recreational facility currently prohibited by the declaration if consented to by property owners and parcel a tenants the declaration should be revised to delete section 5 restrictions on uses to allow uses to be regulated by the urbana zoning ordinance the plan commission has the following options in plan case 2454 pud 22 to recommend approval of amending the existing pud to city council without any additional conditions as proposed in exhibit j or to recommend approval of amending the existing northgate planned unit development to city council with conditions or to recommend denial of amending the existing northgate plaza plan unit development to city council um, i don't didn't state it here but if you do have specific reasons why you believe it should be denied it would be helpful to provide those so that that might then guide the applicant finally um, staff recommend that plan commission forward plan case 2454 pud to city council with a recommendation to approve the proposed amendment as presented with the proposed modified declaration and development plan as shown tonight and the following conditions that the applicant must obtain consent to all of the modifications of the declaration and development plan from all of the property owners and the tenants of parcel a and as typical construction of the proposed climbing facility must be in general conformance with the site plan as included in the application as urbana boulders climbing edition dated june 17th and the addition dated june 24th which was that last site plan that i showed you um, that is the end of the staff report i'm happy to answer questions um, and also uh, mr bragg and mr thomas are here to answer questions as the applicant okay questions for staff i have a small one about order so it sounds like the the recommendation that you change the zoning so that it allows for recreational use has to happen so I get right like it doesn't happen here it just yeah. would it be agreement between the property owner does because I did I hear that wrong yes okay so um, respectfully so uh, the zoning here is B3 general business. Mm -hmm. It allows the existing climb, um, bouldering gym as a private indoor recreational development. The proposed climbing wall is exactly the same sort of mm -hmm. use, so no rezoning needs change. Okay. The only change that we are proposing is that there is a section of the declaration that says you can't have recreational training facilities okay. if this is what you're talking That's about. My question. So yes. yes, so we're proposing that that be deleted from the declaration. Okay. Because um, otherwise, technically, yes, that the climbing facility would not be able to be built. Sorry, I didn't have that. That's what I was unclear. So it's okay. unclear about the process. So, so that you do you have to do that step. 
first? Can you do it consecutively? Because, you know, like, I know, I just want to make sure, like, the process is logical. Like, right. if so there's the something in the declaration that says... The declaration would have to be modified, which is this amendment that we're talking about tonight. Okay. If you recommend approval of the modifications and city council says yes, then we would strike that section okay. that says no recreational facilities, and then they could apply and build their expansion. Okay, all right. I, I still find this confusing. <laughs> I did too. It took me three months to figure it out. So, yes. so you're referring to a declaration. Yes. I understand the declaration to be an element of the earlier application for the PUD. Yes. That was approved. Yes. Okay. Now, the the use example does have to be approved by both or that is can the city change the declaration or do do the tenants have to follow the declaration and the city is one of the parties that can agree to this change so interestingly, that use restriction section five does not require city council approval. It only requires property owner and parcel A tenant consensus. Okay, so, so I, I, I'm working on this. Yeah. It seems to me there are three things here. One is that in the doc, in the approved PUD, there are things that are potential changes that are explicitly require city approval. Yes. There is the declaration that's part of that application that was approved that requires consent from other tenants and owners. Um, and, and then, let's see, I had it and I've lost it. So, so there's If I can maybe help. Yeah, the declaration probably. itself is what lays out what sections require city council approval. And yes. If, yes. Okay. And, and let me just go ahead and bring that up because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Okay. All right. And so this will be better because it's an actual PDF. Um, and it's here in the section that is, I believe, general provisions. Okay, general provisions, covenants run with the land. Uh, duration talks about how long covenants, restrictions, and easements last, yeah, injunctive okay. relief. This is, this is the nugget, modification provision. This agreement may not be modified in any respect whatsoever, blah, 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 except with the consent of all of the owners of the respective parcels plus the tenant of parcel A, and then only by written instrument. So they, like we have to record it. Okay. So, so that so, says yeah. just tenants and property owners. But then go, it goes on to say, it is further understood and agreed that this um, agreement shall not be changed without the city council of Urbana in respect to the following specific provisions. Any okay. changes to section one or two, except for paragraph six, or the first sentence of paragraph three of section three. So those are the okay, three so bits. So there's a covenant and this is the crucial, so, so in some cases, it requires both. Yes. In some cases, it requires only the tenants. Yes. But the whole thing is also subject to approval as part of the application for the PUD. Yes. That's, those are the three things I was trying yes. to do in my head. Yeah. Um, okay. And my, 
my impression is that that the changes that are being affected by the city's decision are the reliance on the underlying zoning to deal with the height limit. Correct. And the approval of the site plan to expand the building envelope. Yes. Anything else? Um, so go ahead and, and repeat that if you would. So I the things that actually matter from the city's point of view are changing the parking requirement and the implied height limit right by uh, referencing the underlying zoning yes rather than other language yes correct so we and are those still are subject to the other parties to the covenant as well regardless of what the city does correct if, if plan commission recommends approval okay. and city council says it's great but one owner says no the, it all bets the, the are covenant, off yeah okay I, I think i think i've got it <laughs> other questions well this is a sorry and it just it's a small because i'm trying to think process sure. just so that i follow the logic so one can assume and i know we shouldn't assume because this is legal so that the that this has been a great like agreed upon right like all because although we had the letter that came from the bank that one assumes that because i know you're going to require signatures one could assume though that we're, we're operating from the assumption that the property owner right par parcel a has agreed to all of the, no. Oh, okay, we shouldn't no. assume that. No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Um, you can know that property owner of the west side of Track C, which is Urbana Boulders, is okay with it because they applied for it, and the bank has said that they're okay with the general concept, but again, they haven't seen the actual modified language, and so we, the applicant, will provide them with the modified language and not necessarily the site plan, but they would show them the final development plan. So not the site plan of the fancy Urbana boulders, but they would show them, you know, these 26 parking spaces are gonna be eliminated and this building area is gonna be expanded. Whatever the zoning ordinance says you can build in that expanded area, are you okay with that? You might know that it's gonna be Urbana boulders, but it could be anything else that's allowed by the zoning ordinance in a B3 district. So it's like somebody coming to you and say, I wanna build this thing, but I have to change the zoning. You don't look at the thing that they wanna build, you look at the change in zoning and all of the things that it could allow. Okay. Um, so one of the things this means is that those parties other than the city also need to understand what they're agreeing to yes because the change to a reliance on b3 makes various things possible yes so including height part part of our, yeah. our public notice okay. policy uh, process was you know, doing a mailing to all of the, the property right. owners. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if no other questions for that. Oh, was that? Okay. All right. No, no, that's fine. Um, I will defer to the applicants and take the okay so we are in a public hearing yes um so I'll, I'll quickly review how this works um the staff has presented the summary of the case 
the petitioner now gets to outline and uh, present evidence. Then we listen to other proponents, if there are any, then opponents, if there are any, um, then staff may make additional comments, petitioner may offer rebuttal, petitioner may offer summary, then we close the public input, the commission deliber deliberates and may make a recommendation. So the petitioner wish to speak to the commission? <coughs> Thomas and I'm representing the architect. Uh, thank you, Marcus, for presenting the case. You can. Uh, I'm here to right. answer any further questions. Any questions for the petitioner? No questions. Not right. at this point, I guess. Right. Thank you. Okay. The applicant wish to address yes. the. Um, yep, my name is Alex. I'm the applicant or the owner of uh, Urbana Boulders. Um, I think Marcus. I think Marcus did a good job laying out the uh, proposal. I don't have any uh, further things to say about it. But if you have any questions, okay. Okay. So, seeing nobody else, I think we can close the public input and open for discussion or a motion on the case. Any discussion? Can I get a motion? Looking for the case number. <laughs> I can read. You want me to? You went first. You got it. You got it. You got it. Plan case number 2454 PUD 22. Um, so, right, to, to without, yeah, so I move to approve moving that to the city council. I said that way messy. Yeah. I'm sure that there's a prettier way to say it. The, the usual is recommend. I'm recommend. To, to send to the council with a recommendation for approval. Okay, so I recommend that we send to the council for approval plan case number 2454 uh, dash PUD dash 22. Okay, a question for staff. Do we have to add any of the edits that you mentioned today as explicit changes or are those already incorporated in? They, um, they are already incorporated with mm -hmm. the proposed modified declaration and development plan. Um, and then right. just a, a so, point of clarification, do you want these two conditions to go? Yes. Okay. Okay, I need a second. Second. Seconded by Ms. McFarland, I think. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Can I get a roll call? Will Andreessen? Yes. Lou Hopkins? Yes. Deborah McFarland? Yes. Karen Sims? Yes. Chen Chi Yu? Yes. I think that's everybody. And then abstention from Mr. Fell.
Okay, do we have any new business? None. We do not. No audience participation. Staff report? There, um, I will mention that um, the Octa Pharma uh, will be going to the, I think Octa Pharma will be going to Zoning Board of Appeals as an appeal of a zoning determination. And I will say that uh, this case, uh, the PUD case will be going to Committee of the Whole because it is a planned unit development for discussion um, and then we'll go to City Council. Okay. Okay, we don't have a study session, so we are adjourned. Adjourned at 8 o'clock. <laughs>